So it's our first upper 90s day out here in the central coast. And what I did was I took and took these scissors and cut all the big sun leaves out of this melon patch. Now there's all kinds of different squash in here. Pumpkins. Got some pumpkin right there. Got zucchini. We got heirloom tomatoes. And by freeing up, you know, some available space in and around and amongst the plants, I've alleviated the amount of water that will be respiring from the leaves. And I've also made it easier for the honeybees to discover the flowers. And you can see they're working this patch over pretty good. That's a good example. There's a bee. And so, um, unfortunately, since it's so hot, some of these flowers are kind of closed up. But, nonetheless, all the shoots that are coming up, almost about half of them, or about twice as many, are <clears throat> flowers. So we're going to get a lot more fruit. from our squash by alleviating the energy because the squash and melons they have such big solar panel gigantic leaves that they're gonna have enough energy to produce their fruit and their smaller leaves will just you know swell out and get bigger so that's a good tip as far as increasing your yield kind of started it as an experiment and a couple weeks ago, I saw a, a boom in the amount of uh, flowers and fruit, and so I did it again today. I cut out all that, all those big giant leaves. You can see the bees are just after it. And we got some heirloom volunteers. Peppers are slowly starting to take off, but the onions, as soon as that warm weather hit, this mix of different types of onions just took off. So definitely that signal started. And, um, and it doesn't hurt to have a couple bees here and there in your yard working, the, working all the flowers. And so in the evening time, I'll come back and water everything. Um, some of these plants that aren't suffering from peach leaf curl, I'll, I'll top water them just to alleviate them because you can see some of the leaves are starting to cup because the weather here is very, very mild <clears throat> with a lot of fog and overcast and so the leaves get big to get that sunlight and then when it switches on to hot it just curls up all our leaves. It really puts the plants through some strain. So I try to get on it and water pretty good and sometimes I'll douse the plants down and kind of slow that respiration. Here's some flint corn. Next season I, I think I'm going to grow a pretty good sized patch of corn, probably in the strip of dirt here by the driveway. I'll probably get the rototiller out, clean up all that dirt, and plant rows of corn. Mix a bunch of horse manure and goat manure and chicken manure in there and stoke it because it's all sand out here. These are old abandoned, not abandoned, but long forgotten sand dunes. Anyway, I thought I'd tell you guys about that. Here's how bad our mole problem gets. We've got gophers and moles around here. And they get into the roots and start chewing up the roots for the sugar. Killing off our plants. And I'm going to start selling some 
beehives on the side. So here's a, a mother hive of pretty cool bees or pretty mellow. Here's a split. This is a five frame wide half size colony. So that's what you start with usually. And so I'll package these up into um, plastic nukes for sale. Once I start getting clientele really. It's just a matter of finding people that want to buy them. And I've been encouraging bees to swarm into these empty boxes using swarm attractant. So, um, sometimes it works. I mean, some of these boxes are from swarms that moved in. And camo's my new look because every box has different markings on it, so it's easy for the bees to determine which hive is theirs. They're more aesthetic. They kind of just camo and kind of blend into the environment. And uh, a lot of neighbors get kind of uppity about keeping bees right by the fence line. But they also make a decent barrier. So if there's any shenanigans and someone and wants to, you know, cross into your, into your boundary, they're going to have to <clears throat> deal with your bees, and then they're going to have to deal with your dog, and then maybe your shotgun. <laughs> so, pomegranates are setting in, prickly pears growing, going to fruit. Little patch of mullen over here for medicinal with the lizard doing push ups. This is what we do with all our manure. We just put it around the tree, kind of under the drip line. And then kind of let the sun break it down. Just the wind and the sun, the radiation from the sun the fog and the you know dew and everything kind of breaks it down and then you can see plants are growing right in the middle of it so it's not that kind of hot um, poisonous manure that's going to kill the plant off although some of this goat manure is pretty rank so <clears throat> I haven't been watering through the manure I've been watering the tree at the root base at the base of the trunk So I'll let you know how the potatoes do in the next video. Those radiant beautiful poppies.